today's presentation is to do a high level to do a high level overview of the qpcr technology and what kind of applications we can do using qpcr and then we are going to slowly dive into um fact of what you need to be looking in your next qpcr machine and lastly we i will like to introduce our newly launched Azure CLO real time PCR systems and we will quick we will go over the exciting features that the machine has to offer along the presentation if anyone has any questions feel free to type your question in the chat box and at the end of the presentation we can um, we can go over those questions before before we get into qpcr and its applications I would first like to introduce introduce the company and my team. So Azure Biosystems is, I would say, a small company with a large impact currently, and it was founded on the basis of innovation. Our founders, Alnur Shivji and Deeping Che, Dr. Deeping Che, were other founders of the company. Alnur Shivji is known to is known to create many companies in the market. Special in all kinds of fields, such as IT, bi uh, biological sciences, and other communication-based technology. The main pillar of the company is our Dr. Deeping Che, who is a well-known, who is a well-known um, innovator in the field, especially with his strong expertise in uh, optics-based technology. Just to give you. A little uh, background of Dr. Deeping Che. He was he was the early employees of Illumina. In his entire career till now, he's led the formation of about ten innovative imagers, most of which were launched in his last company at Alpha Innotech. He was the first to develop the fluorescent quantitative fluorescent Western blotting imager that used uh, CCD when he was the VP of R and D at Alpha Innotech. As I mentioned previously, um, along with along with Deeping Che, our company houses a lot of expertise in people who have experience with optics-based technology. Um, we are a team that has come from innovative companies such as Alpha Innotech, uh, which was which was later acquired by Cell Biosciences, that became Protein Simple. And from there, we established our very own Azure Biosystems in 2013. We are situated in the United States of America, in California, in a town in the Bay Area called as Dublin. The history of our product portfolio goes back to back in 2014, when within the first year of our uh, First year that we have founded, we launched the industry's first CCD images that uses both lasers and LEDs, which is called as the Azure C series. Followed by the in 2017, when we first when we launched the first hybrid CCD based imager and laser scanning system that is capable to do phosphor imaging uh, and uh, near infrared imaging and uh, RGB fluorescent imaging, along with chemiluminescence. Then in 2018, when we launched our when we launched our own Western blotting reagent and solutions and blotting accessories. In 2019, when we innovated our uh, we re we reinnovated our Azure imaging system and came out with our Azure imaging line. And much recently, in the year 2020, when we entered into the genomics market to launch our first. QPCR machine called the Azure CLO real-time PCR system, which I'll be talking about in the next uh, in the next few slides. By this, we currently are entering into a market where we can offer a full range of workflow, ranging from um, from DNA to studying proteins. Our team is spread out our sales and support team is spread out globally not just in the us but all around the world 
we are we have rep, we have representatives on almost every continent um specifically for asia we have um, nicole vikram andy uh liu and uh, wiki vikram nicole and uh kailing sorry i missed out on her are present at the webinar today so one thing i would like to tell about about my team is that we are just not a group of just salesmen selling product we our sales team is a group of technical product specialist who have deep knowledge about the products we use right up to the roots of doing an experiment so we try to provide uh, research solutions to our customers and that's always our goal with that i would like to start with a little brief about the qpcr and its applications a real time pcr or qpcr is a process where you can amplify specific regions of the dna that is called as the pcr or the polymerase chain reaction real time pcr is an additional technology or a specialized technique in pcr that allows you to visualize uh, visualize the real time that reaction Real time PCR is a specialized technique that allows you to visualize your data in real time as the reaction progresses and this real time visualization of the data allows you to quantitate minute amounts of DNA sequences in a sample so this is what your real time PCR is if you if many people might be aware about various applications about of uh, qpcr I'll be going over a few of them. The first one is the applic application of uh, qPCR in detection of uh, detection of GMOs or uh, genetically modified organisms. It's currently the talk of the town where um, people are trying to. There's a strong there's a strong debate current currently going on whether to. consume gmo gmo products or to stick to organic products and therefore in order to evaluate these products there are many gmo authentication kit in the market that allows you to quantitate the amount of uh, gmo expression in the particular organism the workflow is pretty simple it involves taking your taking your uh, experimental gmo sample which is usually your food sample that lead and uh, followed by extraction of dna and then using the gmo authentication kit you confirm for certain gmo markers one such one such broad assay gmo marker is the identification of markers for cauliflower mosaic virus which is the main uh, modification tool used in most of the approved gmos one such kit identifies the promoter sequence in the cauliflower mosaic virus with it's a set of primer that identifies the particular promoter sequence the same kit also has primers that can read the open reading frame for the cauliflower mosaic virus positive detection of both the promoter and the open reading frame confirm that the food sample is in fact a gmo and based on the amounts of expression you can uh, determine how uh, how much of uh, gmo expression is there in the particular food sample lastly as a control you also have primer sequence for the plant dna sequence to to evaluate the efficiency of your qpcr based based on uh, based on the sample used uh, and the results obtained you can quantify the amount of gmo expression in uh, in various food samples as an example in this particular data uh there were a wide variety of uh, food samples evaluated 
for both the promoter sequence and the open reading frame sequence. And this way you can confirm the expression of um, the expression of GMO markers in the particular food sample, thereby allowing. Thereby allowing um, allowing the uh, manufacturer or pro uh, the producer to evaluate uh, the particular food sample. So this is one such application. The next the next application. All of us are aware that might be aware that qPCR is only restricted in heavy molecular biology fields, but that's not the case. One of my previous colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Toby Engel at uh, Florida Institute of Technology, she's a marine biologist, and currently, I don't know if anyone of you follow the Discovery Shark Week. She gave an interview for discovering a new shark species. Um, of the coast in uh, Hawaii. And the approach was simple. What she did was she took the tissue sample from the unknown species or the species in question. In this case, it is the Hawaiian dog shark, dogfish shark, followed by extraction of DNA. Then using qPCR technique and various species specific assay, she identified and locked down that this particular undetected species is the Hawaiian dogfish shark. And she had received many accolades for it, but the main principle for this technology, for, for this detection was the use of qPCR uh, technology. The next thing that uh, we all now are aware is the use of qPCR in uh, the detection of the novel coronavirus 2019 or the COVID-19. Most of the detection currently for, for um, or the early detection of coronavirus in patient samples is done using qPCR. What it involves is it involves taking the patient samples such as a nasal swab followed by DNA extraction. Then you undergo a process of conversion of the RNA to the cDNA called as reverse transcription and then subjected to qPCR or real-time PCR system. Similar to other applications, we need something specific that detects for the novel coronavirus markers the COVID-19 markers. These markers are the primers that are used in the assay. Currently, the most the three recommended primers in the COVID kit are for the, are for the, three, are for the two coronavirus uh, specific genes, which um, allows you to identify the virus as well as specific coronavirus. And third, to another primer that serves as an extraction control for, um, for reverse transcription or RNA P marker. We subject the sample to qPCR as we would do for any qPCR. Then we analyze the data based on what the data is obtained. And after adjustment of the threshold or the cutoff values, we determine the CQ numbers or the amplification values using the recommended score chart provided in various kits and based on what is being detected in the sample, we evaluate whether the sample is positive or negative based on the obtained CQ or CT values and based on the recommended uh, results, based on the results obtained and the guidelines laid by CDC and the local uh, health authority, we confirm whether the particular patient sample is patient sample is um, positive or negative for the COVID-19 virus. So now looking at all the applications, the big the big question arises is 
what are you looking for in your new qpcr machine or in your next qpcr machine and what i personally think and this is based on my user experience and looking at the applications i just uh, um, presented in the earlier slides i think it in, it involves around three key pillars and the three key pillars the first one is of course the performance as you saw in the application the detection of gene expression ranges on a wide variety of concentration you can detect samples that are very low in the expression and samples that are very high in the expression so therefore you want your qpcr to to have the ability to do sensitive detection the next thing you also want is you do you for diagnostic for diagnostic approaches or diagnostic research approaches you want to make sure that the result obtained is faster because so that you can get conclusive data and inform the people that they have been infected or not infected with let's say the coronavirus so the other thing you want in your qpcr system is speed the third thing in terms of performance you want is the ability to do multiple assays in one go or to be able to do a multiplex qpcr the next thing you definitely want on your qpcr system is the ability to generate trustworthy data for me trustworthy data is something that is reproducible and data that is uniform across various replicates of a particular sample and lastly the qpcr system should be flexible and flexible enough to offer a wide variety of gene expression applications and therefore thinking about all this we at azure decided to launch our very own azure clo real time pcr systems based based on the pillars i just mentioned we developed a system that is uh, high on performance because of the unique optical design that we've used that allows to deliver sensitive and reproducible data it is a flexible machine because it is engineered for a wide variety of qpcr applications giving out data that is uh, with high sensitivity all this has been packaged in a very user friendly workflow using simple touch screen and assay setup and also makes your uh, experiments to run easily and reproducible our aim here is that every user who walks to the machine should be able to use the real time pcr system without any prior training and lastly keeping in mind the modern connectivity option the azure clo real time system can be operated as a standalone machine or if you want you can connect it to an external pc and operate the machine but the main question is all of you have seen various qpcr machines in the market and really there isn't any there isn't any strong innovation that has happened in the last uh, couple of years so what is really what is really special in the azure clo real time pcr system and the answer to that question is our optical design so our optical design is innovative because we use a fiber optic system the benefit of this fiber optic system is that it allows dedicated excitation and scanning of fluorescence from each individual qpcr well on a 96 well plate but not only that our optical system does not detect one well at a time it does not detect eight wells at a time it does not detect 12 wells at a time it detects a total of 16 of 16 qpcr wells in one particular scan therefore it offers more speed and precision during your qpcr experiment additionally we have designed our optical optical system in the azure clo uh, azure clo real time pcr to 
not require any passive reference die or passive uh, normalization such as rocks. Therefore, any interval differences that arise have been taken care of because of the strong optical system. To add more to this, our optical system generates data that you can trust. I know I'm emphasizing this a lot, but this is very important. Most conventional qPCRs out in the market currently can only detect one data point in one particular well. In case of in case of optics in case of optics technology, that would be a pixel. In the case of Azure CLO real-time PCR system, the fiber optic system can detect not just one but about 100,000 pixels or 100,000 data points in just one well. That means the output data from your from the Azure CLO real-time system is um, much more reliable and reproducible for every experiment that you do. Additionally, since the Azure CLO real-time system dedicatedly, scan, dedicatedly scans one well at a given time, a sing, uh, it scans, it scans well, it just scans the well, you can be rest assured that the amount of background or the noise that comes up in your, in your data is very less because it, our system makes sure to only scan fluorescent readouts from your experimental sample and from no, nothing else. The Azure CLO real-time system comes in two models. It comes in Azure CLO 3, which is a three-channel system uh, capable of doing FAM, WIC, and SCI5. The Azure CLO 6 is our fully packaged uh, real-time system that can scan uh, dyes ranging from FAM, WIC, Tamra, ROX, uh, Texas Red, SCI5, and also SCI 5.5. The next thing I want to talk about is how well does our machine perform? So again, I'm going, I'm going to keep the same three pillars of uh, uh, three pillars of criteria and I'm just going to expand on that. So when we evaluated our qPCR machine, we wanted to do a strong evaluation. So the first thing we wanted to do was we wanted to see if the detection uniformity of the machine is pretty efficient. Not only when you look at 96 wells in one particular machine, but also if you were to compare assays done on different machines. So that's why we looked at the interval and intravel uniformity. We also did an assay to make sure that the temperature is accurate because fluctuations in temperature during qPCR plays an important role for the efficiency of your reaction. The third thing we did was, um, we wanted to make sure that um, since the principle of qPCR involves uh, to look for twofold change in gene expression or twofold changes in fluorescent levels, we wanted to also evaluate for our machine for that particular aspect. And lastly, we wanted to see if the machine can do melting curve analysis. So the first thing we did was an interval uniformity where we, where we compared what are the changes in CQ when you do 96 replicates in one particular machine? And as you can see, when we do a 96 well replicate assay, the amplification curves obtained and CQs obtained are pretty tight, ensuring that all your replicates get the same thermocycling condition. That means there isn't any bias in your experiment data. However, we did not want to stop here and we wanted to see if we were to do if we were to do the same experiment on different machines does the cq change and the answer is no if you were to do the same experiment on different machine you can be rest assured 
that the assay will perform the same way on different machine. Thereby, the data repeatability on different machine means your data is much more reproducible and trustworthy. The next thing we did was we wanted to check for the accuracy of the temperature. So for in this case, why is it important is because if you if the temperatures fluctuate drastically along your qPCR experiment during the annealing phase, which is the phase where your primer actually binds to the DNA sequence and gives you a product, it might lead to some inefficient or non-specific binding if there is any temperature fluctuation and therefore your data might not be the best. To evaluate this, what we did was we, we developed an assay where we had two sets of primers. One set of primer would only bind if the annealing temperature is uh, pretty tight and absolute, correct. Um, so therefore, if the temperature is not accurate, if you were to do a qPCR on the on qPCR assay on the system and then run an agarose gel of the PCR products, you would get two bands indicating non-specific binding or uh, formation of non-specific products. If the temperature is accurate, you should only get one band if you were to run the product. And if the temperature is too high, your primers would not bind to this to the sequence and you would not get any product uh, on the gel. In this case, I wanted to evaluate if the system is good for a system is good for temperatures at 60 degrees Celsius, which is the uh, which is the um, common temperature in most qPCR uh, annealing assays. What we did was we evaluated eight machines using this assay. And what we saw was the temperature is pretty accurate. Why? Because when we do this assay and evaluate the PCR products on a gel, we only see one single band when compared to the control. The next thing we did was to evaluate the capability of the machine for twofold sensitive detections. So, when we did a two-fold dilution series of, uh, of a particular qPCR assay and performed qPCR on a machine, we were able to obtain a highly efficient uh, result with, uh, with an ASCII of 0.99 and an efficiency of 99%. As you can see, the amplification curves are pretty well spaced apart, one cycle apart, and the, you get a perfect standard curve. And this is only possible because of the high thermal uniformity and reproducibility that, that the machine offers, which allows the user to confidently detect twofold differences in gene expression. The last test, the, the next test that we did was again an important test. And, uh, and the reason for that is once you have a qPCR machine in a lab or in any research institution, you do a lot of experiments on the machine. And when you do a lot of experiments that involve heating and cooling on the machine, it can lead to um, long-term stress on the machine. Thereby, over a period of time, there can be some uh, defect in the machine causing your data to not appear the right way. So therefore, we subjected our machine to about 1000 qPCR, 1000 qPCR experiments. If you do the math and consider that each, every single day you were to do just three experiments, three to four experiments, which is about one and a half hours worth of qPCR experiment. And if you do the math, 1000 experiments is equal to about one year of continuous operation of the qPCR machine. So what we did was we subjected our qPCR machine continuously, non-stop for 1000 qPCR experiments and at every 100 experiment point, 
we did a qpcr we did the same qpcr assay and saw what is the uh, what is the what is the fluctuation in the cqs of any when we looked at the data we saw that the because our machine is made up is very durable and it has an efficient thermal and optical system there was no change there was hardly any change in the cq values obtained at every 100 experiment time point suggesting that the machine is made that the azure clo real time system is made for the lifetime or for a for a long usage of in a particular research lab lastly we wanted to evaluate if the machine is able to do melting curve analysis where you slowly melt your pcr products from a high from from starting from a low temperature to going slowly to a higher temperature and look for change in the fluorescence the change in the fluorescence helps you to evaluate the melting point of your pcr products and that's how you can uh, look at your data and the azure clo is absolutely able to do this but we didn't want to just stop there and we wanted to make sure that the user experience with using the machine should not be difficult and should require as minimum training as possible and therefore we developed a software that is much more intuitive for the device that easily allows you to set up your experiments and to also view the real time status of your uh, of your uh, data not only just the amplification curves but also we have on board temperature sensors that gives you a real time monitoring of the of the lid temperature as well as your sample temperature so that you can you can uh, troubleshoot yourself if there is any any uh, temperature errors in the system the azure clo real time system also comes with a package of its own analysis software that allows the user to do various gene expression um, experiment analysis based on the data you obtained again we wanted to make this as intuitive and as uh, visually pleasing as possible to the user so that it's um, it takes less time to create and analyze your your entire result um although whatever i've shown here might not be might not be enough for you to understand the benefits of having the azure clo real time pcr system in your lab if you wish to request a demo or if you want to test out the machine yourself in the lab feel free to get in touch with uh, with our uh, expert azure technical product specialist uh Kailing, who's on the Kailing, Dr. Kailing, who's on the call, on the Webex session here, along with Nicole and Vikram, are the people in the Asia at the Oceania region who can assist you uh, for uh, getting your next QPCR machine for your research. Or simply, you can get in touch with Azure Biosystems at info at azurebiosystems dot com, and we will make sure to get you your next QPCR machine. your application and with this i would like to open the floor for any questions that 